Hey everyone and welcome back. So today is going to be a library tour video. Yes, we're bringing you the most exciting things here. So today we're having a look around Inner Pethry Library. Inner Pethry Library is in Scotland and it is Scotland's oldest lending library, which is just your regular old library. This library began sometime in the 1600s. Don't quote me, not entirely sure, but I know it was around then actually, so I'm kind of sure. Um, it was actually the chapel that's next to this current library. Um, it existed as a really small library, which I think was a personal collection. And then as it grew, um, there was a change of owners and then this owner built what is currently the library today. Um, this library doesn't actually operate as a lending library anymore. It closed somewhere in like the 90s or something like that. No, sorry, in the 60s. Um, but you can still go there and like browse it like we did. Um, and I went as part of my course, one of the modules on my course, which was called Publishing Literature and Society. So this is the left part of the library when you first walk in. Um, and in this particular case, I know around this time they're doing something about Robert Burns. Um, and my camera is just burnt because someone dropped the lens, not me. Um, so it spends a lot of the time during this video doing that. Um, but they have just collected up some of Robert Burns's old well he was old but his poetry his collections and they have that on display so what's this one it's a collection of poems and what does this say the Kilmarnock Burns that's what that does say 1786 and this is more towards the left hand side so I can't remember what this book was but um Blair Drummond is like a place in Scotland and that's their family crest and then I just thought this outside bit was nice um, with the view of the grave but obviously you could just sit there and look outside So panning over, that's my friend Fred, panning over to the sort of store on the left side but going over to the right, loads and loads of books and this is a Scottish Noel, more books, Sir William Wallace. Apologies for the shoddy camera work, I'm clearly not a professional vlogger but you get the picture. This next part is on the right of the library and this is a, I guess, display of all the drop caps that they found interesting in some of the books. So someone made a tapestry out of it, which I thought was quite cool. I have no idea what this is. It says the first light, so pause it, have a good look. And this again is another tapestry collection. Uh, I'm not sure what this one entirely is about, but you can see Theresa May up there and some queens. This is the letterpress printing. I genuinely had no idea how this was done. So for me, it was very interesting um, just to pick up all the little pieces. So you will see me holding up some of these, but again, the lens, so it's just a lot of blurry shots, but you get the overall picture once again. So now we're going upstairs. I don't know why I didn't show you the right of the library, but okay. So the library has two floors. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. And this is the upstairs bit managed to get a shot when no one was in it this is just as they were closing it up um so just panning around just so you can see what the room looks like in this section they have a lot of the Odyssey, there's some of the translated versions of the Odyssey there, split into many, many books. In this case, they're using it to showcase cookbooks. So I think the collection was called Cooking the Books and it just shows you things to do with food, which is my favorite thing. So I was sort of loving the vibe of this, although I'm not gonna lie, sugar plum don't sound nice to me.
And now this section is particularly interesting. So the filming comes in a bit late, but what she's displaying there with her finger is the fact that this Bible was meant to be a finger side so that you could easily read it. I don't know why it is the Bible they have, they have decided to print in all sorts of different formats, like make it so small and compact. Um, I know, do HarperCollins do that with the Gems collection or is that to do with the dictionaries? But I don't know what the obsession is with getting the Bible printed really, really small. Again, look at how small that is. Uh, you'd obviously need a magnifying glass to read that. The one that she's just picked up is one of my favorite ones because again, super, super small, but the case it's enclosed in, that little circle you see is the magnifying glass. So that's pretty awesome. And again, my camera is just not cooperating really, but you can see the size, you can see the size of the text in there, absolutely dainty. Um, and this one, Christ Almighty. I mean, I shouldn't be saying that while I'm talking about the Bible, but y'all get the point. And so these are the other displays they had on, so 19th century in America. So they were just displaying old artifacts, artifacts to do with that. Um, I can't say I know too much about this, but I guess it's giving me something to do with the Native Americans over there. And then it moves on to the 19th century Oceania and Pacific. So again, some books and I guess, does that say fun facts? No, some books from around that period as well. Here we have a cabinet with a focus on trees. They do change their displays, but obviously this particular one happened to be on trees. So here's me trying to focus my camera in on that. Um, and then I'm just gonna pan down and show you some of the books that were on display. This book here is a particular favorite of mine. Look at how detailed all these sketches are um, and just so many varieties of trees and plants. So this case is looking at the borrower's register. As you can see there, it says the story of the library, the borrower's register. Um, and my lecturer actually said to me, one of the reasons that they, this place gets so many visits, it doesn't get that many visits, it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, but people come here to trace their family history because anyone who would have borrowed something would have been on this register. So if they get, um, I guess, a hint that someone came here, they came, They come and look at this, which can sort of help them place where they might have gone next, where they might have been, um, and all those sorts of things. So this was a nice little look at, a nice part of history. I thought it was very nice that it was able to connect people that way. Um, and I'm pretty sure they said that this collection was actually put together by someone who was doing a PhD at the uni that I go to, um, but I could be completely wrong, so don't hold me to that. This room is an offshoot from the main room that we were looking at and again it just contains loads and loads of books. I thought this area was particularly nice because it just seemed like the books were organised by the colour of their spine. There seemed to be some sort of pairing together of the colours and it was visually very pleasing.
I'm not gonna lie, my camera work here is appalling, but I tried to salvage the shots that were actually quite good um, and cut a lot of it out. So I hope it's enough to just kind of give you a feel of what was in that room. Here I'm just trying to show you the gold ends of this paper, I completely forgot what this is called again. Um, it's like gold spray paint on the, I don't know. But I'm, as you can see I'm failing miserably at showing you the inside and then I wanted to pick up this small little book that has this sort of tartan print resemblance, I don't know. Um, I just thought it was really cute how small it was and then I was trying to flick through and show you but again, failure, failure. But yeah, I have no idea who that is, so I'm very sorry. It says the name there. And the final book, British Bears. I thought that was just a really nice looking book. That's the only reason I picked it up, really. And then look at all these eggs. It reminds me of Pokemon, to be honest. And really, that is it. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting um, and I hope it's made you want to visit a library. Thank you so much for watching, bye.